This is a presentation of Northeast Streaming Sports. Buffalo. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I thought I was right. So anyway, so yeah, Mac, um, you're really impressed in these playoffs. <laughs> so, so, this is a presentation of Northeast Streaming Sports. Good morning. You're listening to the Mac and Jack Sports Show on Northeast Streaming Sports. Interesting music selection here. Welcome to the Mac Jack Doc Chris and Mo debate today here on Saturday, March the 23rd. The Chris and Mo team are known as the Morning Squad, and the Mac and Jack team are known as the Old Guys. And the Old Guys, I believe, are undefeated through this program of taking debate topics and arguing them. So let's introduce everybody. We have Mac, Jack, Chris, and Mo. Everybody say hi this morning. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, gentlemen. Matt, uh, Mac, why don't you tell everybody the rules here and so everybody knows, and then I'll present the first question. All right, what's great about this debate is that, first of all, we have four rounds. Uh, Dr. Paul is the announcer and the judge, so uh, he will decide who won each round at the end. Of course, we'll tally them up and, and find out who the winner is. We 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 debate uh, issues that, that are in sports today, of course, some historic issues, but the thing is that you might end up debating something you really don't believe in because the other team takes the question that you might have wanted to, you know, be pro on. And you get, all of a sudden you've got to be con on it. So it leads to uh, uh, Jack getting very frustrated and me laughing at Jack as he tries to defend something he doesn't believe in. So so anyway, so that's what that's what happens. And that's why it makes it a hard debate. And. I believe we give the visitors, Chris and Mo, the first chance to take a position on the first question. And so the first question is, for the Miami Dolphins to become a legitimate NFL championship team, do they have to fire their head coach and or get rid of Tua? So Chris or Mo, one of you is going to jump up and take that question. So you want to say legitimate championship team. So the first question is, well, what is a legitimate championship team? You look at the NFL today, and the NFL is an offensive-minded league. It is a quarter-based league. Well, with that in mind, let's look at what Miami has in place. Head coach Mike McDaniels is an offensive-minded head coach. In fact, he is one of the most talented offensive-minded head coaches over the last two or three seasons in the NFL. So as far as head coach goes, Check. Well, now let's look at the quarterback. Quarterback position is something you need to have if you're going to win a championship. Well, Tua just led the league in passing yards. Tua just led the number one rated offense in the NFL last season. Oh, and by the way, the season prior, before Tua got injured, where did the Dolphins rank at offensively? Oh, they were the number one offense in the NFL. So if you're looking at the Miami Dolphins from a coaching and quarterback aspect, when they've been firing on all cylinders, they've had the number one offense in the NFL. You need to have a top five offense if you are going to contend and win a championship in this league. So is replacing either of them what is needed to win a championship in Miami? Absolutely not. Now, do some of them need tweaking? 
Do some of them need to do a little better in their part? Absolutely. But let's not sit here and pretend that winning a championship in the NFL is super easy. I know that I know the Chiefs make it look like it's all sunshine and rainbows and anyone can do it. But unless you got Patrick Mahomes, there's going to be some growing pains and some hurdles. But Miami's on the right path. They have all the right places and uh, right pieces in place. And going and blowing it up and getting rid of your quarterback or your head coach when clearly it's working uh, is not going to get you to a championship any quicker. Well, you know, I wish Frank Letirzer was here because his favorite team is the Dolphins, too, and he totally disagrees with Chris, as so do I. First of all, first of all, they have to find a way to get rid of their head coach. Great offensive coordinator, as Chris said, but he's not a head coach. I mean, you, you just look at him. He wears sandals on the sideline. He's wearing sweatpants. He has a Hawaiian shirt on. He looks like in the offseason he follows the Grateful Dead. So, you know, if you look at every other head coach in the NFL, there's some sort of professionalism, right? They, they, they kind of present themselves as a head coach. This guy does not. I agree with Chris. Great offensive quarter. And some coordinators cannot be head coaches. He happens to be one of them. So, to me, if you want to uh, win a championship, that's what it's all. Listen, what do you, what do you, in the beginning of the season, your, 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 uh, your, your final goal is to go to the Super Bowl, not make the playoffs. That uh, you know, the T- Tampa Bay Buccaneers made the playoffs. So that's not your goal. Your goal is to go to the Super Bowl, and right now with that head coach. They're not going to a Super Bowl. And with that, I will tag out and let Jack come in if he would like to. And uh, hopefully we can. Yeah, okay. Chris, uh, I could tell you're a highly intelligent guy. I, I really mean that. However, there's a difference between fact and opinion. Two plus two equals four. That's a fact. The Dolphins having one of the best offenses in the NFL. That's your opinion. It didn't show up late in the year against a weak Tennessee Titan team. Against the Chiefs in the playoffs, outside of one pass to Tyreek Hill, they were awful. That was prime time, the playoffs. They came completely flat. The Dolphins fell apart at the end of the year. They had no identity. They hit a wall. They were like a marathoner who hit a wall at 20 miles. You've got a lot of marathoners who could run well for 20 yards, but the last six, that's been the Dolphins' problem all along. They've hit walls. And this coach hasn't been able to get them to regroup. Tua's arm has all of a sudden gone dead late in the year. There's always issues. He can't put it together for a full year. I mean, maybe it is time for them to look into some serious change. Is it my turn? So, first of all, let, let's let, let's talk about – I'm sorry. We, we judge our head, our head coaches based on attire. That's crazy. He opened with – he wears sandals. On the sideline, first of all, he doesn't wear sandals. Second of all, he wears very expensive sneakers with the tag still on them. Um, if there is an award for most stylish head coach, it, it's going to us. Um, but I didn't realize that style on the sideline determined the quality of the head coach. Because if that's the case, what, what are we talking about with Bill Belichick? Because that guy dresses like a total slob. Uh, but no one's sitting here questioning his style on the sidelines. So I don't know if style is necessarily a qualifier for quality head coach. And then you want to talk about fact versus opinion. It's not an opinion. The fact is the Dolphins had the best offense in the league last season. It's a number. It is a statistic. If you go and look at the rankings for the best offense, Miami was number one. If you go and look at the rankings for the most yards per game, Miami was number in two. In the playoffs. Those... Tell me about the stats in the playoffs. Oh, oh hang on. They no, were you just, dreadful. You, oh, hang on. Dolphins. You just said That's it was an fact. opinion. You just said it was an opinion that Miami had the best offense in the league. That's not an opinion. That is a fact. So and don't – oh. how, how did they perform in the playoffs factually? Their stats. They lost the game just like every other team did except for the Kansas City Chiefs. That's what happens every season. You go to the playoffs and everyone loses except for one team. That's that's how it works, big guy. You lose in the playoffs sometimes. Let me just say with dressing, so much is perception and getting respect. You take someone who's in charge of a company and they come in and dress like Mike McDaniel, a school principal. 
He could be the best principal. If he comes in with sandals, he's going to lose a degree of he respect. He doesn't wear sandals. <laughs> I can't believe we're back on the dress thing. This is what this is what you bring. Who who are you debating every week when you're bringing sandals as the opening fight? Come on now, guys. Sandals? Listen, That's crazy. Jack, Jack, I got this, all right? Listen, the way you look is how you play. Every team, for instance, I coach We're still football. talking about this. I, I, coach football. I coach football. And all of a sudden, when I got them new uniforms, they started playing better. They felt good about themselves. Miami is a soft team. And you can't deny that. They have no physicality, and that represents their coach. The coach doesn't look physical at all. I mean, look look, look at the Detroit head coach, Campbell, right? That's did a physical. Did he win Detroit a Super Bowl? Is a physical, Detroit is oh, a he, physical Oh, he won a Super Bowl. He, he's not he's even employed. employed. He, went, he went farther. Who, Campbell is it? No, he has no job. Dan Campbell is unemployed. Dan Campbell is unemployed. When did I that guess- happen? I guess being super physical isn't wait, the wait, wait, to wait, the wait, 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 Dan Campbell, the head coach of Detroit Lions, you're telling me he's unemployed right now. Yeah, because his his presence was too commandeering during he's, head coach I, interviews. I have not read anything where he's unemployed. In fact, Ooh. from what I'm 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 reading, he's the head coach of the Detroit Lions, and they're ready to to take another shot at it, uh, Chris. Ooh. Right? I mean, where where did you see he's unemployed? Maybe I'm confusing Dan with someone else. My bad. I think you, I very much think you are. And Dan's right. Hey, I, I guess, I guess that's far. the one point you get in this debate. <laughs> well, that's. I guess, a, and I guess, a, and I guess it's not point. a clean sweep. I, I think we got it. We've scored a lot of points. First oh. of all, you have you have no physicality on your team at all. They fall apart at the end of the year, as Jack said. They haven't had a physical team since Don Shula was a coach there, and and. You can't win every game based off offense. I don't care if you have a top five offense. Who cares? Your defense always ends up winning the game. That's what wins the game in the end when they're playoffs. Are you going to let Mo talk? Or are you, are you gonna... Oh, Mo, Mo, Mo doesn't need this one. This, this one's okay, all, right. all right. All right. Okay, good, good. So, so, so okay, Mo, so you heard his, 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 uh, the way he's going to do it today to you. But anyway, listen, it's, it's, it's well known, Chris that the Miami Dolphins are not physical at all. They 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 have their fast receivers on the end. They got a great running game. Look, don't get me wrong there. But they have fast receivers on the end. They 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 will not put their nose in there when there's a tackle to be made. They, they they're just not a physical thing. Sorry. So is is that an opinion or a fact going back to your partner's previous Well, season? I mean, if you just watch the game. You watch the game? I do All watch right. the game. Me too. Me too. They're not physical. So anyway, uh, and, and well, that's about all I have to say. And that's why Miami will never be a championship contender as long as that head coach is there. Got it. Okay. I, I feel like I've already won this. So okay, let's, all right. Let's go okay. to the scorecard, baby. All right. All right. So we'll go to the scorecard. I, I don't understand the don't have Mo argue part position here. So the, the the way this team works is I'm taking round one. Mo's taking round two. We got this. This is called the morning squad. We're going to come in and dominate and move on. <laughs> okay. All right. So um, Rick Sherlock says failure to understand the NFL should cost you the argument. I don't know who he's talking about there because, all right. I think the question was not about defense. Because the question was, should they get rid of the head coach and or Tua? If the argument was, should they get rid of the head coach? Is the head coach the reason that they're not winning? Well, then, okay. Then then a lot of what I heard makes sense. But the fact that Tua was part of the question means it was a question based on the offense. And I believe that Chris did a great job by citing statistics that have to do with the offense. Oh, Rick now saying Campbell coaching. Yeah, that was that was a, a giant error. There was a high pop-up on the infield. Chris was trying to catch it. And instead of catching that pop-up. I got up, excited. I got excited. All right. <laughs> instead of catching the pop-up, he ran into the dugout. Oh, the it's, ball... it's Vrabel. Vrabel is the one not coaching. My bad. <laughs> he's, the, he's the big guy that's not coaching. Now. I think the argument that just because um, the coach of the Dolphins is a little guy that the team can't be physical, I I don't understand that. 
And I think Chris gets the points on the idea that the clothing doesn't really matter because we've seen coaches dress in all sorts of different styles. I mean, I would prefer they all dress like Tom Landry and wear a suit on the sideline, but we've seen coaches dress in all different types of styles. I don't think anybody would say that John Madden was a fashion plate. And of course that he mentioned Bill Belichick. So it would have been a clean sweep, if not for the pop-up that fell and a couple of runs scored. But I think because it was an offensive question, the, the question about defense and things like that don't really matter. And the winner in the round goes to Chris, even though he didn't share. <laughs> well, Matt nice. shared, should cost him a point too, Doc. I think. Well, Matt I mean, said, but Matt set the question up completely, and you now he handed it, he handed it over to them, Matt. Yeah, we yeah. more or less lost it because of the way Mac presented the question yes, more than yes. him winning it. Yes, yes, I agree with that too. Are you, are you it, it was a win host? on a wild <laughs> pitch or whatever. One question one in, you're going to blame the host. <laughs> yes. wow, of course we okay. are. <laughs> all right, so we're going to go to question number two. All right, okay. All right, all right so all I guess right. Chris is going to sit this one out. This is going to be all Mo, but the question goes to Mac and Jack, the old guys, not the morning squad. So Mac, I guess, is ready to take this one. He doesn't even know the question yet. Yes, he does. But anyway, hold on. I have to get to the question. And the question is, I believe it's, is golf a sport? Yes. Right. Is golf a sport? And I want to I want to set the record straight because right off the bat I am at a disadvantage because Doc last week said it is. So I'm going to have to convince him that it's not. So I'm going to give it my right, right, right. But you're not. I, I'm I'm not basing it on my opinions. I'm basing these all on your arguments. All right. So all I should have to say is Chuck Daly, and that would be the end of the debate right there. And people who know who Chuck Daly is, he's a he's the out of shape guy that that won a couple tournaments. So that's all I should have to say. But I'm going to say a little bit more. Okay. Um, you know, golf is a, is a very skilled sport or a skilled competition, I should say, not a sport. And the reason why it's not a sport is because just, it's just, just to be fair here, that was a big pop-up that you dropped. Was, you said it's it a was, sport. Was, oh was, no. All right. Was. I'm I'm miss, I miss, I miss spate. I miss spoke. So golf is 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 not really complicated, right? I mean, you go up with you with your team if you're playing with partners or, or or you're playing with other golfers, and you put the golf on a tee, sort of like tee ball, right? I mean, you hit it. the The object is to hit it fast, uh, far, and straight. They they don't run like in five year olds doing tee ball. There is no running allowed in in golf at all, right? I mean, you can't run in golf. That's illegal. Um, then. You wait for the rest of the golfers uh, to go. So after they go, you all get in a cart or you get in your cart, and then they drive you to the next hole, where, again, you do basically the same thing. The only thing that you do different is maybe you choose whether it's a nine iron or a six iron, and you normally have a caddy there that helps you decide that because, you know, I mean, being a you, you really don't know. So the caddy kind of helps you along to to to. To do, you know, to use the correct club. If there's wood clubs involved, it's a totally different discussion because you know somebody might bring wood clubs and that might throw the whole thing up. But the uh, the object, of course, is to get to the green. And when you get to the green, again, you call your caddy over, and the caddy, you know, he looks at the angle and everything, and he tells you how to hit the ball. And you hit the ball, and you try to get it in. And and once you get the ball in that hole, uh, the other golfers again go, but leaving you plenty of time to talk about anything you you, you really want to talk about. It doesn't even have to be about golf. You have to be quiet if you're a fan. I mean, that's again, you could get removed from the course if you're not quiet. And you know, uh, you know, if a free a basketball is shooting free shots, of course the crowd is quiet, right? And no, they're not. You know, I mean, if you can't concentrate and hit a golf ball and block out the noise, then you probably shouldn't be playing the game. There is no size uh, qualifications. You don't have to work out. You can if you want. You can be like Tiger Woods and work out. But it really, it, it's it's up to you. I mean, they're all sizes, all different shapes, uh, tall, short, uh, old, young. We just had a young guy win it here in Connecticut. Uh, he kind of entered at the last minute, and he played his way through and won, won the tournament, actually. So you, you, there's really no 
video study. You don't look at the tape. That's why you have your caddy. So you really, uh, there's there's no prep that you really need. And if you do happen to hook or shank the the the, uh, the golf ball, you could just kind of do a redo. That You can take the ball out of the, the woods or out of the pond, and then you can hit it again. You lose a stroke. But if you're a good golfer, you can make that up. So there's really no, uh, there's no big deal. If you, you don't want to do that, it's embarrassing. But you know, you, you, there's really no reason uh, uh, that you have to be uh, that good. You got to hit it, you know, straight. That's that's the key thing in golf here. Um, you know, I, I think that maybe people confuse sports and competition. Golf, you have to have patience. Yeah, you, you have to you have to block things out. You have to concentrate, which you do in pool and and you know and in chess, you do that in those those competitions also. But there's no one preventing you from doing anything. And to me, a sport is when there's somebody on the other side that's preventing you from scoring. Whether football, baseball, basketball, tennis, those to me are sports. This is like a big money making event. It's an event. It's an event where a lot of rich players play to get richer. And, uh, you know, hey, that's fine. I, I'm all for that. I wish I could golf. I, I, I would love to learn how to golf and do it and do it well. So, again, Doc, to me, a sport is something where you're competing against someone else. Really, you're competing in golf against yourself like a marathon runner. You want to be, you know, you want to beat your time or you want to beat your last score, right? So to me, that's a competition. Track is basically the same way. Um, but, you know, until somebody is actually like you see them commercials trying to tackle you when you're, 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 you're hitting the ball, it's not a sport. All right. So let's start off with the obvious thing. What is golf known as? It's known as the gentleman's sport. So in golf, no, you're not going to be running around or sprinting and the crowd's not going to be yelling over the course of the of the match. But here's the thing about golf. To say it's not a sport is, is kind of crazy. Is bowling a sport? Are, are bowlers fit? Are they athletic? Because I think bowlers come in all shapes and sizes. I think you can bowl and drink at the same time and, and it's considered a sport. Are, are NASCAR guys athletes? Because you could just break them down as guys that drive really fast. Do you have to be super fit to drive a car very fast? What I know is this. I grew up with my uncle who loved golf. I, I, I'm, I'll tell you right now, I'm not a big golf fan, but not because I, I don't acknowledge it as a sport. I just never was into golf. But he would tell me about Jack Nicklaus, Arnold Palmer, those kind of iconic players. I got to watch Tiger Woods and maybe – I'll be fair. He brought me in. He was the first guy that looked like me that I saw play golf at a high level. Tiger Woods, when they mentioned all-time great athletes, they mentioned Tiger Woods with Michael Jordan. They mentioned Tiger Woods with Muhammad Ali. You get mentioned that way because you're an athlete, that you stand out. You're an iconic player, a transcendent athlete. Just because Tiger Woods doesn't wear pads and he's not is testosterone driven doesn't make him any less an athlete. These guys with their ability to drive the ball down the down the fairway 200, 300 yards and land it on the green and their ability and skill to make those long putts. I, I think it's a game. It's a game of skill, but it's a sport as well. I think it's really easy to denounce golf if you've never played it, if you've never tried it out. To listen to Mac talk, any of the four of us could go out there right now and we would be golfers. If we, if we hit the fairway, I'll speak for myself, I would be a very bad golfer. I am not, I am not fit. I am not skilled on that level. I, I just think that golf – to water it down, to it, make it a game, I'll, I'll do what Mac did. He started off by saying, I'll mention John Daly and, and leave it at that. He meant to say John Daly. If bowling is a sport, by default, golf is a sport. It's really that simple. Well, you know, I could say two Sports Illustrated, the number one sport magazine, have a swimsuit issue. 
woman gets in a swimsuit. Is that a sport? You know, the swimsuit issue? So they can claim they're athletes, you know, the women in the swimsuit issue. Do we they claim they're athletes? Uh, they they're, not, they're, 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 they're not athletes. And if someone, they once asked Joe Frazier, he didn't feel golf was a sport. He said, if an old guy can beat me at something, a guy twice my age, that's not a sport exactly. If a 70-year-old guy can beat a world-class athlete who's 25 years old in another sport and beat him decisively, is that really a sport? I mean, it's a, it's a great skill, golf. It takes great skill. Skill. Playing chess, for example, that might get that might be classified as a sport in some places, but is it really a sport? It has a lot to do with thinking, a tremendous amount to do with intelligence. But we got to draw the line somewhere. What what are sports and what are just skills? I mean, it, it's a hard line to draw. But in golf, you hit the ball. There's no twisting there's no real turning out you know you just hit hit the ball either hard soft medium but you're not cutting to your left you're not cutting to your right you don't really have to anticipate once you line up to hit you could take forever to think how you're going to hit the ball you don't really have to react to something instinctively when you react to something instinctively that's sports no that's called the gentleman sport if I'm driving my car and I instinctively swerve, I'm not playing a sport. I'm just driving. That's that. That's that's that. You're talking about again. The conversation is: is golf a sport? If you bring up tennis, yes, but tennis is a completely different sport. If you bring up football, football is a completely different sport. If you bring up boxing, boxing is a completely different sport. But I could just break down boxing as to two guys beating each other up. And that's not really a sport. So, tell you so it's not the same thing at all. And boxing is called the manly art of self-defense. And meanwhile, guys are hitting one another with the hardest possible punches, landing continuously in fights. I don't want to hear gentleman sport because someone gave it a term in England 200 years ago or whatever. It doesn't make it the gentleman sport, golf. I mean, uh, how many, how many, go how many golfers take a dive? Issues. So if you want to talk about the gentleman sport, is that your role model? That's your ultimate gentleman, Tiger Woods. Within his sport, yes. We're not talking about his personal life. We're talking about Tiger Woods, the athlete. If if we're going to go down this line about attacking character, Mike Tyson is one of your guys. We don't want to talk about his character. Do we? I agree. I agree with that character thing, what you're saying. But it has to lap over. If it's the gentleman's sport, you have to conduct yourself as a role model. On the on golf and course. Golf the on, the on the golf course. On the golf course. You don't think when people tune in to watch Tiger Woods, they don't think of the baggage. You don't think they've lost a certain amount of fans because of this so-called gentleman sport, their main representative. I, I think we're drifting, real I think we're drifting off top. You don't think that people look at Floyd Mayweather and knows that he likes to beat on women and children? That you doesn't hurt. That, that doesn't hurt. Go I agree. Box, if we're, we're going to go, go down this lane, boxing will always lose because they are littered with guys with well, domestic violence issues. Well, boxing's not competing issues. against golf here. That the point is with golf, is it a sport? Boxing is yes, a sport. Yes, it's a sport. Don't it's even sport. compare golf as a sport to boxing. They're, boxing, you put so much more sports. conditioning. They're two different sports. That's I, what they a are. Golf I, think, I, I, think, I think that's the argument. Training. I, can't, I can't tell you that golf is a more physical sport than boxing. They're completely different sports. I, I We could get into the whole line about bowling again. How physical is bowling? How Why great is that? Because no it's considered a sport. No one else is bringing up bowling. Is that no one else is bringing up bowling? Is NASCAR a sport? Is NASCAR, is NASCAR a sport? Is NASCAR a sport? I'm not uh, discussing that. I'm uh, discussing golf the, here. Yeah, the we're answer is yes. Golfing. The it's answer like, is yes. NASCAR is a sport. The answer is yes. Yeah, you're, you're veering from boxing. You, you tried to hint I'm that boxing veering. isn't a sport. Now you're you trying to, to hint to NASCAR. To What's going to be next? You went into Are we character. Are going to talk about ping pong or what? I mean, what? 
Let's talk about golf where the guys hit the ball, they get in the cart. Golf takes great skill, great skill. That's a given. Don't get it, but it's not a sport. With and the why is it not a sport? Athlete, it makes it not a sport. The greatest athletes in the world can't play golf well because it's a skill type thing. It's not a sport. The guy who wins the decathlon in the Olympics might be a lousy golfer, but he could do every other sport thing. Right. He's not a he's not a great he's not a great golfer. He's not good at that sport. Michael because Jordan, plays, Michael Jordan, Michael a Jordan is the greatest basketball player of all time, but he's a lousy golfer because he doesn't have that kind of skill or that kind of ability. You're you're trying to compare one sport to another by no. making the, by making that comparison. No, you're, you're the one. You're golf the one. Is is a sport. You're, the one. No, you're comparing. You're acknowledging golf is a sport. Jack is not comparing. You are. Yeah. Jack is all over the map. Jack, Jack <laughs> he's Jack, trying to follow you. Jack he's following to, you. Wait a minute. Did he's did following bring, you around the map. Did I bring up? Listen, did I bring listen. up character? Did I bring up listen, Tiger Woods? Listen, all, listen, all listen, Tiger listen, Woods off of listen. Golf. Jack is a, is a mess. He's golf a mess. is a spectator sport. That's what golf. It's a spectator sport. He just said it was a sport it's for the second time. He just said it's the a sport. The second time he called it's it a sport. sport. Listen, right. listen. Spectator sport. It has nothing to do with the golfers. It's a it's sport. Spectator. You just it's said a spectator it again. Spectator sport. Right. It's for the fans. It's Third not time you called it a right. sport. It's it not. It's, a it's sport. not. It's Thank not. You, Thank it you, is not for. It is not a sport. Golf. It's for the it's for the fans. That's all it's for, gentlemen. There's three elements to a sport: competition, skill, and athleticism. You need all those things to be a golfer. If you, that's, no, that's you it. That's what makes it a you sport. need heart to dig down deep and push oh, against resistance. A that's a sport. You have to dig down deep. That's an opinion. Okay? Golfers by don't definition, dig down deep. golf is a sport. Real heart. If it's all three requirements, that's all you need. That's all the No, you need was. more. You need intestinal you know, fortitude. You no, you do not. Ask you to Marcus fortitude. Russell if you need intestinal fortitude to play a sport. And Ask Chuck, James Harden if you can be Chuck fat Daly, and play a sport. If Chuck Daly is winning, if Chuck Daly is winning pro golf tournaments, John Daly. What Chuck? Chuck is his brother. Bo, you you never. Well, he used to coach basketball too. But anyway, John Daly. Is is no pitcher of a sportsman. He's a guy that sits back and eats and drinks beer, and he's and still good at it. That James Harden is. That guy gets paid. He rolls but, in out of shape all the time. Well, what is James, James Harden? James Harden's been in oh. shape this season, by the way. Oh, he's great! This season, season he's been in shape. He's only so been we're in good. Like Fifteen years. But so here's, years. here's here's what they're Woo. doing again. Instead of talking about golf, they're going to play basketball now. So, I mean, I don't get where you guys go here. You, instead you, of talking yourself. about sports, you're picking out what guys look like, what they so, wear, what yes, body size they have. Go back to the last question. Of fortitude. He went to intestinal fortitude. Purple, it's a good fortitude. thing Mo and I don't have body issues on this show because you're tearing apart outfits and body sizes. It's well, a good thing we're secure about ourselves. It, yeah. is, this, it is. Is, this a, is this a sport, is. guys? Do you consider this a sport? You said it three times that it was. Matt, you said it was a sport. You said if you sport. consider that the debate show or being on air is a sport, then I don't know if you guys you, you guys know what you're talking about. Because this is not a sport. This is competition, though. It is a competition. Which is by definition part of sport. No, well, Along with skill and athleticism. Almost. It's almost. A almost. almost. It's a but not They're cheerleading competitions. Is that a sport? Yeah. Cool. Cheerleaders yeah. are athletes. All right. Okay. So cheerleading is a Sport, you cheerleading say. is a sport. It is. I don't think anyone pays to see the cheerleaders. Oh, pay don't, the don't open a door you don't know anything about. Don't go Be there. Careful. Be, careful. Be, careful. Be, careful. Be careful. Don't open that door. Be careful. <laughs> All right. Yeah. So, my goodness. My goodness. Um, Denny McLean. How many games did he win in the 1968 World Series? One. I'm not done. Excuse me, Mickey Lolich. I'm sorry, Mickey Lolich. Uh, three. Does Mickey Lolich look like an athlete? Well, by their well, definition, some guys are body type. George Foreman, mm. the second coming, didn't look mm. like an athlete, but he mm. trained hard. He trained hard. Okay, so so John Daly. How do we know he didn't train hard? Well, he didn't train, as you would say, with weights. 
I know he punted quite a bit. I imagine How he drove. Know that? I imagine well because he played pretty well. So I, I would imagine he putted quite a bit. I would imagine he went to the uh, to the to the driving range and drove golf balls. I would imagine that would be part of his training. What do Tiger Woods, Jack Nicholas, Lee Trevino, Ken Venturi, and Arnold Palmer have in common with Wayne Gretzky, Tom Seaver? Oh, I could go down a list. Michael Jordan, Arthur Ashe, Cal Ripken Jr., Lance Armstrong, Tom Brady, and Brett Favre. What do they all have in common? Well, they all play sports. Oh, oh again, again. He did it like again. Five times, like five yeah. times. <laughs> they, they've all were picked by Sports Illustrated as the Greatest sports athlete. person of, of the, year. the year. Well, yeah. we can't help what they picked. We can't help with sports. <laughs> I thought I thought you had the argument, Mac, when you came up with you, there's a confusion between sports and competition. There is. But then when the question became you needed someone preventing you from scoring, that would then eliminate running, track, the decathlon. Right. It would eliminate ice skating. Um, and, and all these things that are part of the Olympics. And so I can't believe I'm saying this, but in order for Mac and Jack to win this thing, they are going to have to go on a run because right now the score is morning squad two. Mac and Jack, nothing. <laughs> I knew, see, I knew I, I couldn't guess. convince doc. I knew I couldn't. He but said. it wasn't. It, it, and I don't think you, you mentioned that they drive in the car. I do not think that professional golfers drive in the cart. I could be wrong about that, but I think they walk because wasn't there a, wasn't there a controversy 15, 20 years ago about a golfer who had, um, you know, some type of, uh, Dis he had a disability disability yeah, and yeah. they wanted him to, he said, I want to be able to drive to, from hole to hole. And they said, no way you have to walk. And so that part of it is, I mean, I don't know how far you walk when you walk 18 holes, but you're you're not walking two feet. You're walking a lot. And the, and the idea of the downtime, well, if you're a football player and you're sitting on the side, I think I think the statistic is like the amount of actual action in a football game is is minuscule compared to the amount of time you're watching it because the plays go on for five seconds and then people stand around for two minutes. And in baseball, you sit around for a long time. And if you're a starting pitcher, you sit around for games on end without playing but are you playing in a sport you are even if you're going to the field so all right two nothing i i by the way i for the record i agree with the other side so I agree. <laughs> <laughs> I just you, did, you, did a, you did a good I job i did a good job though you did, you did i was starting to believe it myself what i was saying <laughs> you were, you were, our good so friend much. keith angle <laughs> You Look at this TGI sports talk you walk five six seven miles in a golf in a golf uh, game so well, yeah, Keith, Keith being I don't think Keith, I don't think Keith could walk walk six or seven miles just to just to be but honest. Keith, Keith, I'm not sure if he can. I'll bet you he can, but Keith is not a professional golfer. He definitely would right. stop and get a beer along the way. That's for sure. So, <laughs> no doubt about that. That's, that's off, off the topic. All right, here we go. This should be a good one. It's going to the morning squad. I don't know where you're going to go with this one, but this is the big topic in sports today as we speak. <clears throat> Should Shohei Otani be punished mm. with the gambling situation? Mo, I am going to tag you in on this one, but I'm, I'm going to open it up, sir. Um, Mo and I have discussed this on the morning show, and I know there's still <clears throat> more information to come out. So I, I know the easy side to this debate is going to be, well, we don't have all the information yet. We need to see where it goes. Um, so let's not be punishing people before. I, I know that's probably what the other side is going to take. And I know I'm fighting an uphill battle here, but I'm still going to fight that uphill battle because you are talking about a situation where everybody in Major League Baseball knows the rules. Everybody who works for a Major League Baseball team, whether you are a staff, whether you are a production person, not just players. I want everyone to understand this. <clears throat> if you are affiliated with Major League Baseball, you sign a waiver. And that waiver outlines that you are not allowed to gamble on baseball. Specifically, it also outlines that you really shouldn't be gambling at all. 
there's a gray area when it comes to fantasy sports for other leagues, not baseball. Some baseball guys do fantasy football, and it's frowned upon, <clears throat> but it's it's part of the gray area. But there is a very clear definition that you cannot be gambling cash money on baseball specifically or really other sports. So let's start there. The interpreter for Shohei Otani first claimed that he did not know that was a rule. He just he made a mistake. He wasn't aware that you couldn't do that. So first of all, that's a lie. He was aware. Uh, he signed a piece of paper. He works for Major League Baseball. He, he knows he can't do that. But let's talk about Shohei Otani. You want me to sit here on a, sat- a beautiful Saturday morning on this show. By the way, Doc, love the Yankee hat. Not sucking up, just talking facts right now. You want me to sit oh, Hold here- on. It's raining in New Jersey. It's not a beautiful morning. Oh, it's beautiful where I am. So <laughs> when, when you're up 2-0 on the old guys, it's beautiful, let me tell you. You want me to sit here on a beautiful Saturday morning and you want me to believe that the interpreter for Shohei Otani stole four points, whatever it is, million dollars for him and was independently making his own bets on baseball or whatever he was betting on. You want me to believe that the interpreter for Shohei Otani has access to Shohei's funds? In what universe are we giving our interpreter access to our money that that blows my mind that's not logical no one's giving their their assistant access to their money you might give your manager access to your money you might give your agent access to your money so i'm not going to sit here and believe that the lowly assistant whose only job by the way is to interpret has access not just to the money but to millions of dollars worth of money and nobody knows about this when your wife or your significant other goes to target and makes a big purchase what happens are you you get a little little update on your app do do you want to verify this three thousand dollar purchase was that you you telling me that shohei otani isn't getting the updates millions of dollars are coming out of your account are you telling me shohei's manager isn't getting updates millions of dollars are coming out of your account and let's not forget it's only been what 48 hours 72 hours and the story's already changed first it was i'm just i made the bets i i just I, i'm a degenerate gambler and i made the bets and i stole from shohei and then it turned into well no I, shohei was covering my debts he was like bailing me out he's a good guy but then it was like, but no, he doesn't know. He, he doesn't actually know. Um, yes, I was in debt. And yes, I was using his money. But he's not involved. Guys, the, the truth is very simple. The, the truth is the truth. The truth doesn't have to change versions. Once you speak the truth, it's out there. We're less than 72 hours into this. And there's already like three different versions of the truth when it comes to this Shohei Otani situation. Oh, and by the way, each new version is making Shohei look better. So when each version tweaks a little bit, and in each new version, Shohei Otani is a little more distant from what actually took place, it leads me to believe Shohei is somehow involved here. And yes, there should be a punishment here for Shohei Otani. Now, if if it just stands right where it is now, and nothing else comes out, I still think there should be some sort of a punishment for Shohei Otani, because you are a product of the people and the company that you keep. And if you want to sit here and tell me that I'm supposed to believe this is all kosher and that the 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 assistant, the peasant in the pecking order is just going out there and blindly robbing the prince, I, I can't. I can't buy that. Well, Chris, I'm gl- if I'm ever on trial, I hope you're not the judge. Because before all the evidence comes in, you you would have made up your mind what the verdict is. Uh, you don't know about relationships in these type of cases. Neither do I. Uh, I'll give you an example. George Steinbrenner tried to buy the Cleveland Indians. He never would have became owner of the New York Yankees. But the reason he never became owner of the Indians, he somehow got access to the Cleveland Indians owner's checkbook because he was close friends with the son. And he wrote out a $25,000 check to buy one of these minor league basketball teams. 
And when the owner of the Indians found out, he was livid. That's why he never sold George Steinbrenner to Cleveland Indians. And imagine how history would have played out. We don't know what old Connie knew. Sometimes when you're super close friends with someone, this guy's just not his interpreter. This is his confidant. This is arguably his best friend. And if he gave him the money saying, look, just pay off your debt. That's the end of it. And so and so. Did he necessarily do anything wrong by just bailing his friend out? Uh, you could say to an extent morally, but did he do anything bad enough to ban him from baseball, to suspend him because he gave someone some money? He's entitled to give people money for whatever. And the interpreter is not a player. The interpreter got fired. The interpreter got fired, and that's the one who Major League Baseball should absolutely go after unless it's proven that Otani himself was involved with the betting in any way, shape, or form. But if all he did was give the interpreter money because the interpreter was being threatened because he bet with an illegal bookie and he wanted for his own friend's safety to put a stop to it and he gave him the money, that's not reason to ban him because Otani wasn't dealing with the bookie. But Otani has to know the company he keeps, and that interpreter has to be banned from baseball for good, but not Otani. Before I tag Moen, I just want to point out, um, I'm not saying Otani should be banned from baseball, nor do I think that the question was about him being banned, it's about him being punished. And if you're trying to sit here and tell me there's a possibility that this guy is his best friend, that it's his confidant, then I'm even more on the side of Otani should be punished somehow because now you're you're introducing a relationship where this is my ride or die. This is the guy I would do anything for. And if you're telling me you wouldn't cross some lines for your ride or die, if that's the situation you want to set up, now you're making even look more look like he's guilty. And your question, you put it out there, should he be in trouble if this is just a situation where his best friend got in with the Sharks and he was just trying to save his best friend's life? If you know, as a Major League Baseball player, the face of a league, much less the face of your organization, that you cannot be involved in gambling, and you go and you bail out your best friend to the tune of $4.2 million, it, wouldn't it be the same thing if your best friend committed murder? And he's like, I need help with this. And you're like, well, I didn't commit the murder. I was just trying to help my best friend out. I was trying to save his life. You're no, right. no, don't you commit the murder. If, if you didn't commit the murder, murder someone, you were no, no, then you're an accessory if you pay off. Don't right. give that example. And this is an accessory. Don't give, he no, is no, an don't accessory give. to breaking a rule in Major League Baseball. But and if he is an accessory, he should the be The interpreter punished. should get kicked out for good. We're That's not, not talking about debate. banning. If he's an accessory to this, he deserves a punishment. He should know better. The defense isn't, well, it was my best friend, guys. No, you know the rules. You shouldn't be involved with gambling at all. Whether he you're gambling or you're paying off someone's debt. As far as we could see. Chris, Chris, what's what's accepted here in the United States and what's accepted in Korea is probably two different things, right? I mean, you, you, you could say that, right? There is a cultural difference. There is some kind of, of, of you know, uh, you know, communication is not the same, uh, you know, as far as the, the English, you know, so they say compared to uh, uh, what everybody, what, what everybody else says. And you can laugh if you want, but it's true. Now, if there was a cover up, I could see your point, right? If they're trying to cover this up, then maybe you have a point. But they reported this right away. The Dodgers knew almost right away. The police were called in almost right away. So he wasn't trying to cover up anything. He was trying to help his friend out. And it's way too early to say, well, we're just going to we're gonna ban him or we're going to suspend him. And then if you do that, how many fans are you going to lose? Major League Baseball is not going to lose all their Asian uh, fans and ban Otani. They're not going to do that. So – you know, while you you got some you got some legitimate points, it's way too early in an investigation to say, "Hey, this guy is definitely guilty or an accessory to this." When we really don't know, as Jack said, he could be just trying to help the guy out so he doesn't get his legs broke by these guys that was running an illegal operation. So, 
I mean, to me, if it was say it was me and you, Chris, and we're and we're sitting there and and some guys are after you because you made a bad bet. If I can help you out, I'm gonna help you out. I don't want to see you get hurt. So I think that's just being just being him t- trying to help his friend out. And that's that's all I think it really is. Yeah, Chris, I'd give it's you five hundred dollars if someone was gonna break your arm. <laughs> the, the the problem is he isn't saying that he was trying to help his friend out. He's saying he didn't know. The, the story's changed again. He didn't say I'm trying to help my friend right. out. He's saying my friend stole from me. That's what he's saying. Right. Right. Oh, so Connie he, hasn't spoken. Let, 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 Other let, people let, are let, speaking. Let, 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 oh, let, 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 has not let, said anything let, let, for the record. The story has what the, story, said. the story has changed multiple times. So right. now it, of wait, it let, me, let, let me finish. Right. He's helping if he's helping his friend out. By the way, if he is helping his friend out, he's still in the wrong. Two, now he's not helping his friend out. His friend is a thief who stole from him. His friend is a degenerative gambler who accrued millions of dollars. And de- here's the interesting thing, but I don't understand. An interpreter, an interpreter accrued millions of dollars in gambling debt. Do you know what happens when you go into debt, when you borrow from somebody at a casino or whatever? At some point, they say, when you say, well, I need more money or more credit, what they say is, can you cover? Are you good for it? And they have to be able to prove that. The interpreter can't prove that. He doesn't have millions of dollars. But you know who does have millions of dollars? Shohei Otani does. Did you ever he hear? Has, let, let me finish. He has millions of dollars. <laughs> that 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 person that he's into is going to go, how can, you, I, how can you prove that you're good for it? Because we can't take your word. You're in debt. He has to have somebody. He has to have somebody that they can talk to and go. No, he's good for it. I've got him. You know who that person no. was? That would have to be Shohei Otani. Mo, how do you know? Well, well, how do you know the bookies ask that? Do you know from experience or what? I mean, I, the way I, you're I, saying I, it, I, I never know. heard. They, they say, say he's good for the money. Oh, it's not a trial here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Have you ever have you ever, have you ever okay Mo, you talk, Mo, you've talked enough now. Have you ever heard of you know if you're breaking the law or if you're if you're or if you're suing somebody because they broke the law, you can't be in the wrong also. In other words, if somebody is not handicapped parking in a handicapped parking spot and you're turning them in and you're not handicapped and you're using the other handicapped uh, spot, you you can't turn it. It's, it's like you did wrong also, right? You did wrong also. So this- I feel like you're making this, my point. This, this, well, let me finish. So this illegal operation is already illegal, right? So they're the ones that should be getting in trouble. They're being investigated. And, and while- the other guy's getting investigated too. You you you're still uh, boring from a illegitimate or illegal uh, legal operation. So right. to get back to Otani, here's Otani. He sees his friend. He he might get hurt. He might end up getting in jail. He says, "Wait a minute, I'm going to help you out. I'll cover your bets for you." Now yeah. there is no proof. There is no proof out there, guys, that Otani made bets. On, on games, there's no proof he bet on any sport. That is what you guys are surmising. So, no, that's not what I'm surmising, Jack. When unless, I'm, you, listen to what you just said. You said unless, well, unless, Tony was going to bail his friend out. Right, right, right. Would you? Would you? That's what's wrong. He should be punished. That's wrong. He is wrong. He, he, is wrong. he look. He's doing the right thing for his friend. But Thank what you. he's what he's doing, so, Jack, is wrong. It's wrong. Professionally, so he is punish, wrong. You should punish Otani, ban him for the game, fine him, whatever you want to no, do. I didn't say, I didn't say ban him. I didn't say ban him. Well, I mean, whatever punishment you think would be good. So you're going to ban him because he's trying no. to help out his friend. We're not going to ban him. We're going to find him. All right, you're going to find him. You're going to find him. He needs you're to know. find a multimillionaire. Go ahead. He's you're going to find him. For, well, for I'm sure he can afford it. I'm sure he can afford it. He just I'm got sure he can, out. too. I'm he just, he just got his friend out. If I'm why Major League Baseball, why not, why not find the Dodgers? Why not find if, the Dodgers? They're responsible. They're responsible for Otani, right? I'm what, gonna set the precedent if I'm Major League Baseball that we're not gonna turn this into a gray area. 
we're not going to turn this into, well, I wasn't gambling per se. It was my friend or however, whatever relationship you want to say he has with him. I wasn't gambling. He was. I was just helping him out. If I'm Major League Baseball, that's a gray area. I don't want that. I don't want a yeah. bunch of situations where guys are like, it wasn't me. It was him. But I'm somehow involved in it. My money is somehow involved in it. If I'm Major League Baseball, I'm keeping that a very black and white line yeah, of, yeah, yeah. I understand. Nothing, hang on. Yeah, I understand what you did. You helped out a friend. Good for you. But as far as Major League Baseball is concerned, the rule is you're not involved in gambling Correct. at all. Let me, not let me helping ask out a question. friend. Let me, let me, let me ask you a question. Wait, wait, wait. Let me ask it. you a question. Let me That's ask you a question. Do you think Beat Rose would be banned from baseball right now if he covered somebody else's bets and he wasn't betting? I think Pete Rose has set the standard of what happens moving forward. This is nothing. To I'm do not, with Pete that's Rose. not the question. That's not that, the that, question. You're right. The question that's is: Should the Shohei Otani be punished? And the answer is yes. Think if Pete Rose, I'm not answering a Pete Rose question. Never bet on baseball, but was has nothing to do with this debate. Cover his bets. No, similar no. situation. Would no. he have been banned? No, he wouldn't no. have. Been. I it's think not so. similar. I will say this: though. I'm sure Pete Rose is somewhere talking about that guy. Look at right. me. Look at that guy. I guarantee you he is. True. Look, I, you, you, you started off with something that makes a lot of sense, but I'll say this. If he is involved in any kind of way other than being the victim, he absolutely should be punished. It's that clear cut. That was the question. And, and all I'm saying is if he's more than a victim, he should be punished. If is a big word. If is well, a big word. Well, you, you already conceded he helped his friend out. Well, he should be punished. What? You, already said, you already said he's innocent. We don't know I, what he is. I didn't say he's innocent. That's wrong. I never said that. I said he was helping out a friend. And if he's helping out a friend, to which me, is painting him as innocent, you get punished, right? You get punished. I, listen, I, there's a big difference between if and definite. That, that I do know. We're all playing the if game, so we, right. we're all we're all falling into the if category. But if it goes the way you said it goes, if he's just helping out a friend, he still. Yeah. I still think he gets punished. Uh, you should. Maybe so. Maybe so. Maybe so. But I don't know if that's right or not. I believe. I, and again, this is all brand new. And I think we're all looking at the the uh, situation in real time and getting different reports and things like that. But I believe if a Major League Baseball player pays off somebody else's gambling debt, that that's against the baseball's rules and you're going to face a severe punishment for that. I, I think I think what Chris is saying is it's that becomes much too close to, well, it wasn't my debt. It was his debt. So I just gave him the money. I believe that that's a punishable offense, but that was an interesting debate. Now here's the problem. I, I, I think both of you made great points on this. I think you both did, did great. Um, we don't have time for a third question, which means even if I give this to Mac and Jack, our time is up. And the sad thing is that the morning squad, Chris and Mo win the Saturday debate two to one. Oh, it's, it's, it's unbelievable. Like, it's okay, guys. They didn't okay. bang up the clock at the yeah. end. They had clock they violations. They did. They did. They that's when we ran the four quarters. Now we did the four corners. They didn't believe what they were saying. They were just eating time in that last. They were holding the ball. They were holding the ball in the fourth quarter, not letting us get a chance with the ball. Oh, no. If that's that's the case, Jack, serious question. Because I remember rooting for Hagler. And so maybe I haven't seen the fight since I was a kid. Uh, and I remember rooting for Hagler and being upset about about the uh, the the, the uh, outcome. Sugar, Sugar but Ray isn't fight. that sort of what Sugar Ray Leonard did? Did did Le Leonard win that fight, or did Leonard win just the last couple minutes of last couple seconds of each round? He flurried to... late every round. Leonard legitimately deserved the decision. I mean, uh, boxing is about perception. Leonard may have. I mean, Hagler may have landed the better punches throughout the fight. But it's orchestrating a scenario. That's what boxing's about. And Leonard orchestrated it magnificently. But it was planned the way Leonard did it. The decision was fair, even though Hagler may have been just as effective or maybe slightly more. 
Fair enough. All right, because I'm going to have to watch that fight again someday. But I remember it, being like, no, no, Hagler won. I wanted him to win. Anyway, I like Sugar Ray Leonard, too. But that's it, the end it, of the show. Guys, guys, great job. I knew you guys would be a handful. Um, you know, and, and you know, we, we did our they best. They were more than a handful. They won, Matt. <laughs> what are you talking about? Like, we won. They did win. They just did. And I'm not a bad I'm not a bad loser at all. We're, we're going to find out if Mac and Jack are bad losers if this was the last time I host the debate. <laughs> <laughs> I will I will definitely still watch uh, coffee and sports in the morning. I definitely Appreciate will continue you. watching one of the best morning shows that we have on the network. And, uh, guys, it's been a pleasure. You guys did a real great job. Um, Appreciate you, you know, guys. Yeah, yeah, it was a lot of fun. You, I told you it was that. a good time. It was a good yeah, time. It, we ended up defending some positions that I really didn't believe in, but that's part of the debate. <laughs> so, you know, that's the way it goes. Thanks a lot, guys. Uh, uh, Keith Angle's up next on the network. A lot of shows on Roku tonight. A couple new shows. Tune in. Uh, sports, you get it all day, every day on Roku. So tune in, guys. Thanks again for, for showing.